Hi, my name is Ofer, and I'm going to walk you through a few tips and tricks for vibe coding. Hope you enjoy this video. If you know anybody who's struggling with vibe coding, is stuck on anything, just send them a link to this video. Let's just jump right in. So you want to start with something. Uh, what does that mean? If you just start with a prompt, that's a little bit of a problem because everybody's starting with a prompt. It'll just look like everybody else's project. Uh, so you want to start with either a theme or a project, an existing project, or a template of some kind, or some kind of a design. I'm going to start with a Figma design for an app I want to build. And in this case, it's going to be a dating app. Okay, And it already has a theme. So the color scheme is mine. Um, it comes from my brand. I'm starting with something. Uh, second thing is you want to pick a library. I don't want the LLM to pick one. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Anima's um, Figma plugin in order to just to start. And I'm going to pick just the first screen. OK, so on the onboarding screen. And in this case, I want to pick Shad CN. OK, uh, TypeScript, Shad CN, React, and Tailwind. Why? Because these are very popular, and LLMs really, really like those. So it's a good idea to start with a library that LLMs are familiar with. I'm going to bring in the entire design, including the breakpoints. And I'm going to prompt in the playground. OK. So this will take a couple of seconds. Let's go into the playground. I'm going to use uh, Anima's web coding platform. It's called uh, uh, Playground. Um, but this will work across almost any uh, web coding application. They're all structured kind of the same. You've got the chat area, right? And you've got the preview and the code area. Um, so first tip is simplify what you're asking for. In this case, for example, you can see that um, this works kind of nice out of the box. Maybe I want this button uh, longer in height. OK, so use the selector. Uh, most of these systems do have selectors now. Uh, make this 30 pixels, pixels higher. OK, so the trick here is to elaborate, to specify exactly what you want to have uh, higher. In this case, it's this button. OK, um, it's always better to click on it and select it than to describe the button with continue, especially if you have more than one button like that. One tip that I really like is uh, just adding a change, nothing else at the end. Uh, this typically does work. The LLMs do react to it, um, and it works quite nicely. OK, so you noticed that um, I made kind of a, a small request. So it's always a big question. Do we make? Do we want to have like an elaborate prompt that um, describes everything that I want changed? The answer is no. Okay, just absolutely no. You want to spe specify exactly what you want changed in a very um, kind of contained uh, request. You don't want multiple changes. Okay, but make the request as elaborate as you need it. So um, don't do, for example, the typical just make it work or uh, make it responsive. No, what does that mean, make it responsive, responsive? Uh, it means I want this to stretch in this way. I want this to resize in that way. Specify all that. But don't try to do too many things at once, because then you're going to cause the LLM to just get confused. It won't do what you want. So uh, one rabbit hole that people get stuck in is either the error area. Sometimes you get an error, and you can auto fix it. Um, in order to avoid all that, so what you want to do is when you have a stable version, a version that you're kind of happy with, uh, you still have lots of steps to go. Just make sure that you save a copy. Okay. So in our case, for example, we have the save button here that saves it, uh, but we also have um, a fork. Okay. So fork means that you're actually saving aside a version of this chat, a version of this playground uh, for use later. Okay. If you start to feel like you are um, in a rabbit hole. So meaning it's not doing what you want. Uh, you asked for something, and it didn't work properly. Or you were a bit uh, kind of confusing or not very specific, and it didn't do what you wanted. Please do not uh, just go forward. Okay, What you want to do is restore. In this case, we have like a button called Reset that does it. Uh, some of the playgrounds have, or the other AI um, vibe coding platforms, have a, either multiple steps where you can do a revert, okay, or you can go to that version in another way. And you want to just try it again. Either rephrase your request, or in our case, we have like a button that just does retry. Um, so undo and retry. And if all goes well, 
it, it should behave a little bit different because there's some randomness to the LLM. It's not always going to do exactly um, what you want the, uh, the first time out. And then you don't want all this hard work that you had previously just to go out the window. You want to have a save point where um, it works and you're happy with this version and then just continue rolling forward. Um, and again, try it again. Even with the same phrasing, you'll often see slightly different results. So I want to share a few prompts that I used in order to make this work. So in this case, for example, I pointed to, uh, let's just move forward, yeah, and back. So you can see that I um, show the LLM exactly what the selected um, radio button should look like. So this is what a selected radio button should look like. Another uh, prompt that I used, the profile should be vertically and horizontally centered. Wasn't before, change nothing else. This is a really good thing uh, to use, okay? Uh, when pressing the like button, make a match. When it's a match, create a full screen view with the profile, uh, add a congratulatory message, and add confetti effects. So it's all one request, okay? It's not too elaborate. If it gets a little bit more, more elaborate, like for the whole app, then it'll just confuse the LLM. But this is close enough. Like this is easy enough for, for it to understand, and you can see what it did. Then I explain what X does, and let me show you what the final result um, is. So, Let's walk through the flow. You can see that there's a few, uh, a few screens here, okay, and they're flowing through. And this is what the original Figma uh, looks like, okay, like this one, okay. And if I run the whole flow from the beginning, okay, so I've got a working app. I've got a continue button, I've got the email address here already filled out, okay. I can select a few things. And in this case, for example, it says select up to three interests. So it's smart enough to just figure out by itself that a fourth one shouldn't be clickable uh, in this chip. I didn't do anything. It just figured it out by itself. Okay. And you can see what the main screen looks like. In this case, I created a desktop version and a mobile version. And you can see that if I drag it like this, I get the match. And if I drag it like this, I just get another profile. Okay. And I, and I can basically go back all the way to the beginning. So that is the idea. Um, I hope you like this video. And like I said, uh, these tips will work across most Vibe Coding apps, including uh, Bolt, Lovable, and the rest. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, just press a like and share this link.